Good morning, everybody. We are recording. Uh, everybody can hear us. I've checked that in the uh, in the chat. Uh, I'm joined today by Mark McNee from Receipt Bank. Good morning, Mark. Um, so uh, housekeeping wise uh, today, everybody, I'm just going to share my, uh, uh, my screen um, and uh, get everything ready for us. Uh, so we are going to be done uh, in 30 minutes because that's what we said the webinar is. So I don't want to hold everybody up from their, uh, uh, their normal day. Um, uh, we'll do some uh, introductions with Mark in a moment, but uh, uh, I'm Will Farnell. Uh, I'm founder of a firm called Farnell Clark and also a co-founder and director of App Advisory Plus. Uh, and today um, uh, we have our App of the Month webinar with Receipt Bank. Uh, I'm delighted Receipt Bank uh, came on board with us as a, as a founder app partner. Uh, they were the first uh, non-general ledger app that we used in Farnell Clark. Uh, back in 2011-12, uh, I think, Mark, at the time that we uh, started working with Receipt Bank, there were eight employees globally. Um, yeah. How many have you got now? Um, so we're, I think it's around about 350. Um, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> obviously we've got offices in uh, UK, Canada, US, uh, Australia and France now. So. Yeah. So you've come a long way since the, the eight employees that, that I remember back in, in 2012. Yeah. And the big thing for me is Receipt Bank was the thing that unlocked the ability for us to do daily bookkeeping for clients, which in turn unlocks a whole load of other opportunities. And we're going to talk about some of those uh, today in the session as we, we perhaps look at some of the things that um, we've had to do in terms of uh, the, the reaction to COVID-19 and lockdown and how our working practices have changed. Uh, and we'll talk about how tools like Receipt Bank have helped us continue to provide uh, the service that our clients uh, need. Um, so, uh, as I say, Mark's joined me. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get a bit of intro from, from Mark in a moment in terms of uh, uh, what he's doing at Receipt Bank, what he's done before that. But Mark's been around accountants and bookkeepers for a very long time now. Um, so I'm sure has some uh, uh, excellent insights to, uh, to share with us. So what are we broadly going to talk about? This, uh, these agendas are never static, um, uh, but what I want to make sure we, we cover, um, starting at the bottom, because I think it's the most important thing here, is, is what does the post-COVID-19 world look like for accountants? So what are the things that we could do differently? I've talked about catalysts for change for firms to adopt technology, use technology not only to work more efficiently, but to deliver better experience for clients. And that's kind of where all of this stuff comes from and we've had to do things covid's provided a catalyst for us to do things that we wouldn't ordinarily have done and what for me would be really sad is that that when we get back to some level of normal that people go back to the way that they've they always did things before COVID-19 rather than look at the positives that have come out of it and, and adapt business models. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how uh, the need to, to kind of change the way that we collect data um, uh, has, has helped support during uh, the, the situation that we found ourselves in and why real-time data is more important than ever. If you're working with clients and they've had to apply for, for C-bills, loans, and everything else, they needed the information. So it's really important that we have that data. And why data capture is really important in helping you uh, as, as accountants and bookkeepers um, uh, get more out of the app ecosystem uh, with App Advisory. So that's our agenda. Mark, um, over to you. Tell us a bit quickly a, a bit about you and, and just in case anybody's been living under a rock for a few years uh, and don't know who Receipt Bank are, perhaps uh, give a brief introduction of, of what you guys are about. Yeah, no problem at all. So uh, yeah, uh, as we discussed before we came on, I, I've been uh, around accountants and bookkeepers for, for around kind of 10 years now working between uh, accountancy and, and practice. Um, albeit still on the, the kind of sales and development side uh, and also um, before I came here with Intuit QuickBooks uh, and now Enterprise uh, Business Development Manager for Receipt Bank. Um, so uh, looking after kind of enterprise firms uh, and still concentrating on that, that real efficiency piece. Um, so the, making sure that everyone gets the, the most streamlined bookkeeping um, processes and data collection processes 
to, to really kind of push you on into that next uh, business advisory uh, kind of step, which everybody's now kind of looking at. Um, but about uh, Receipt Bank, obviously we've been around for 10 years. Um, you know, it's a, it's a long time within the industry. As I said, uh, some people may have been uh, kind of living under a rock, but I think a lot of people have just been introduced into the kind of wider app ecosystem after NTD. Um, they may not have known how many um, you know kind of different tools are available. Um, so, so we're actually seeing this as, as the kind of next stage. People are kicking on. They're just starting to get the benefits out of their general ledger if they've just switched over to, to QuickBooks or Zero. Uh, and the, the next you know kind of uh, logical step and the biggest step for everybody is, is to tackle that data inside. That's where the paper chase is. It's where the manual data process entry is. This is where we can help and we can really kick on and get that next stage of, of efficiencies for firms. Yeah, thanks, Mark. And, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I think the Seat Bank story is quite fascinating. Um, uh, kind of the first real uh, ecosystem add on um, to, to Zero uh, uh, initially, very, very early on uh, yeah. when, when uh, a few years after Zero launched. And, and certainly for us, um, who at the time were using, were using cash flow. Uh, uh, from from kind of 2008, uh, it, it, Receipt Bank enables to unlock uh, the power of an online accounting system. It was the bit that was missing. We could, we were selling uh, kind of cloud accounting on the basis of uh, the, the the basic um, uh, kind of security stuff. Somebody else is worrying about your security. You can access it anywhere you want, but it didn't change our business model really because it was still a case of we had to get data, we had to key the data into the cloud accounting system. So uh, I, I remember first hearing from the seat bank, it probably was in, in like 2010 or very early 2011. Um, yeah. And I didn't, I, 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 I often tell people that I didn't get it because uh, it was an envelope and you had an envelope and you put all your receipts in the envelope and you posted it off and the seat bank scanned it uh, and pushed it into the account system. And I thought, well, hang on a second, Surely that's the bit that I should be doing as as the accountant, the bookkeeper. Um, and hang on, they try to take my my job from me. Um, and it wasn't until uh, kind of the app and and photoing on the app came about, and the email in functionality that that the penny dropped, and it was like, oh yeah, now I get it. Um, and the frustrating thing is, we were going really quickly as a business around that time. Um, and had we have adopted Receipt Bank when I first heard of them, there'd have probably been a hundred clients that we didn't then have to retrospectively move on to Receipt Bank. So since 2012, every client we've got uses uses Receipt Bank, and it it did unlock the ability to to connect it. We had we we didn't have bank feeds early on, but Zero had bank feeds early on. But if you haven't got the core data, it's still really difficult to get the value out of out of bank feeds. Um, and I think for, for the people that are, that are listening, um, uh, I think it's really important to emphasize that even 10 years on in the receipt bank journey, um, the vast majority of accountancy firms are still not using this technology. Um, uh, so I don't know what your, your partner numbers are, are now, but I, I kind of work on the basis of you've got about six or 7,000 accounting partners in the UK. Whether that's right or wrong, it's kind of my hunch. And if that's the case, we're talking about 20% of UK accountants are using um, uh, Receipt Bank. Um, and that's probably, you, being, that's probably being generous. Oh. <laughs> that's, and, uh, that's, that's good course, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny that you, you, you mentioned that story about um, you know, kind of posting your receipts off and stuff like that. But um, it's a very kind of similar story. Um, if you look at Netflix, I actually signed up on Netflix uh, very early on and it was a DVD delivery service. Uh, and they usually get kind of posted out to you. Um, uh, and obviously, you know, with uh, it was only with the, the development of the app and, and obviously being able to watch it online um, that it really started to kick on. Um, so, you know, that, that, that development piece within kind of uh, technology companies is, is you know, is, is quite a common theme. Um, but yeah, just in terms of, of, of us being kind of uh, well-known and uh, within the industry, we are kind of well-known to... I would say that probably the early adopters um, within yeah. kind of cloud technology. Um, so, you know, there, there's still, you know, that, that whole middle ground where everyone has just been introduced into to real cloud and seeing the real benefits of it. Um, you know, inputting that data from, from the bank uh, has now 
I suppose mostly being solved in, in most cases. Uh, obviously, there's still some uh, stragglers with bank feeds, um, but you know that's one of the biggest parts of, of kind of data and solved. Um, so the next part of it is, is obviously the paper chase, and that's that's where we come in. Yeah, that's it. And uh, uh, I think the the big the big challenge. Um, uh, or, or the point I wanted to get across to those those listening is that we, we, you mentioned early adopters, and and even now it's like with I still firmly believe we're in early adopter territory, um, uh, but this if we shift the conversation into kind of the the, the COVID stuff, and uh, uh, we've been doing daily bookkeeping for in in my firm for three three four years now, um, uh, and if we're we're serious about supporting clients for, for covid but even post and pre-covid um i'm a real advocate of of clients having access to data to be able to make decisions in in running their business and this is a mindset shift that that firms have got to do in terms of making that conscious decision that we're going to move from uh, kind of where where we were in terms of once a year doing accounts and taxes to the point that we're we're delivering real value uh, all of the time for our clients there's an argument that some of it is about efficiency and, and running your firm better uh, but fundamentally it's it's about giving clients access to the data that they need and and we've we've had this highlighted i mean i know bounce back loans and everything else you don't need to provide any data but if you want to apply for a c bills loan over 50 grand you, you've got to know where you are uh, you've got to have management accounts you've got to know what uh, what the impact is um and if we're doing bookkeeping regularly then then that happens the challenge is that we uh we have this kind of long uh, uh process and it's really important for for firms to uh to control the whole end-to-end -end process um so i'm a big advocate in accountants doing bookkeepers so they've got that data are you seeing more of a shift in in that with the firms that you're working with in terms of moves to at least weekly but possibly daily bookkeeping yeah definitely so obviously we've uh, um i think obviously just but with uh with us being developed 10 years ago we were uh more kind of aimed at receipts only um i think uh, i think the kind of consensus is within our firm now or within the, our company is that um you know the, the name kind of holds us back a little bit because we're not just about receipts it's, you know it's, it's receipts it's invoices um but at the kind of wider part of it the, the optimized product which is our enterprise product um it really does help uh firms actually track so many more insights about how that data is coming in and how that um, data is, is kind of um input from the clients and how long it takes them to put it in um, so if you really want to change that behavior, you really want your clients to be inputting receipts, inputting invoices within days rather than weeks or months, then obviously we can track that because we track the date of the invoice uh, and then we see when it was input as well. So you can actually then go back to your clients and say, well, look, it's taken you an average of six weeks to input a receipt. If you want me to be um, doing, you know, kind of weekly or monthly reporting for you, um, then obviously you need to be doing this on a more regular basis. Um, it also helps you can track that stuff within your own firm and see who is actually adopting the technology and seeing right. Okay, yep. well, I can see your clients are actually putting all of their uh, their data in through email only. Your your clients are using the app, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you know uh, that we're not just receipts. I think that's something that I need to kind of try and get across to everybody um, yep. regularly when I'm about to see them and they, they see it and they're like, "All right, okay." Um, which is it kind of highlighted that especially in, in uh, you know the kind of most recent rollout that you can actually now get your bank feeds directly into Receipt Bank, so you can actually do your full reconciliation in Receipt Bank now. Yeah, um, which is you know the, the kind of next stage of evolution for us. Excellent. And uh, I know uh, when we think about daily bookkeeping, uh, the, the dashboard that Receipt Bank provide is is like really valuable to us. And, and I'm, I'm uh, addicted to the delay day index. Yeah. Um, uh, and for those that, that, that don't use this in Receipt Bank is uh, if you're on the uh, optimized level, you get a, a practice dashboard uh, and the delay day index measures the date of receipt to the date that uh, the the receipts or invoices land in in your in your partner inbox, um, and, and we average about five days uh, across yes. about five five hundred clients. Um, so what that means is from 
uh, the date that the customer spends the money or gets the invoice on average across our entire client base, we have their paperwork within five days. Um, now, uh, if, if you spend uh, uh, weeks, months chasing clients for paperwork, just take a second uh, and think about what life would be like if your clients were proactively giving you their data within five days of spending the money. Um, I mean, that's, that's really, really serious stuff. Um, and think about what that does in terms of unlocking the service that you can deliver to your, to your clients. Now, I can't give the seat bank all the credit for this. They've, they've built a tool, um, but it's about educating your clients as well to make sure that they're focusing on, on, on getting into good habits of, of doing that kind of stuff. But it means that, that we can, we can deliver at least a weekly service to clients and make sure that they're looking at fairly up-to-date data on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah. Um, so Mark, have you been talking to firms during, during kind of lockdown and things? What, what kind of stories are you hearing from firms in terms of either the challenges they're having or the things that they've been able to, to do and, and any, any indications of things that they're going to do differently? Yeah, so I mean, um, you know, the, the biggest things that we were talking to, to existing clients about is, um, is things like invoice fetch. <clears throat> so obviously this is, um, this is something that we've, we're continually developing and improving. Um, so you're actually relying less on the client, even taking a picture of the, the invoice or, or, uh, or the receipt now, um, because you can actually just hook up their details directly into the receipt bank into their online portal. So if they've got anything like, you know, Vodafone and they've got an online portal for, you know, Travis Perkins, anything like that, anything where a digitally um, created invoice is, um, is made and then sent out, you can actually just put those details in and then that's pulled directly down from the portal into receipt bank it's read it's processed and then obviously it's just ready right to be pushed directly into the, the general ledger um, so <clears throat> not relying on on the clients having to come down with a bag of receipts or the bag of invoices it's the next stage of that you're not even having to rely on the customer to take a picture of the of the, the receipt anymore it can actually be completely contactless you can actually t start to take the the client out of large parts of it so if you can do that for your top 10 spends just think about how much time that's going to save you and how much time it's actually going to uh, save the client as well. In terms of kind of lost receipts and invoices, um, you know, I, I, I can't remember what the, the kind of latest um, stats were. I think we did a, a QuickBooks and I think there was something about 20% of, of lost VAT in terms of lost receipts and, and invoices over the, the year. Mm. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's ridiculous that people can be losing out on that much. When all it does take is, as you've, you've mentioned, is, is a bit of behavioural change. Um, you know, when you've got that receipt, open up the app, take a picture of it, or if it's online, you don't even need to think about it, just cook up the details and it'll automatically push through. Um, yep. So these are, these are the kind of contactless things that we're doing. And, um, you know, as you probably have seen with the, the free trial that, that we put out for, for 60 days, um, one of the biggest things about that was it takes no training to roll out receipt back to your clients. We allow for you to completely lock down the app so that it goes into basic mode. So whatever happens, they get a link, they download it, it fills in their details, it connects up to their account. All they have access to is the camera. So you don't need to train anybody to use a camera on a, on a smartphone. Well, most people. Um, so if you can roll that out to all of your clients in this time of crisis, and obviously they can't come down and drop off all of their paperwork and all of their invoices, that just makes it so much easier to roll out to everybody. And then next, you know, when you do eventually have time to get them into the office and you do trust them with the technology side of things and they are a bit more active in their bookkeeping, you can yeah. sit down and you can have that training with them. But it doesn't mean that you can't roll it out to everybody just now because you yeah. just walk down the app and it's just a case of, right, okay, it's a camera. Take a picture yeah. of it and all that just pushes directly into, uh, into your seat bank for you to then go through and, and do all of the, the coding for it. Yeah, brilliant. And you mentioned behavioural change in there, which are, which are come back into is is like a really important thing that that we've got to think about now in terms of where where we go next, because um, okay, lockdowns beginning to be loosened up, but uh, the world's going to be very different for for a long time. And one of one of the big things that 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 we've done in our firm is is with the way that we price and we charge and we collect money monthly and and we don't wait to collect all the records at year end um businesses have, have been 
massively impacted um, and it's going to take time to recover and it's almost you, you start to look at the different scenarios here and it, it could be that there's, there's businesses out there that um, are going to resist dropping their records off even longer because the, the when they drop the records in the work gets done they get the bill they've got to pay the bill and and mm -hmm. and things so it's anything that that we can do to think about what we've what we've done mm -hmm. over the last few months from working from home um how's everybody found working from home uh we again we were we were fortunate um uh in that uh, uh a lot of our staff worked remotely anyway so the only difference for us was the the surreal vision uh, just as we went down into lockdown told everybody to work from home with members of staff walking out the office with monitors under each arm um, uh, and it kind of felt like we were being robbed but uh, that aside we were fairly um, uh, quickly able to flip into a new way of working we had we had the technology we didn't need somebody at the office for clients to drop records off to um, so what are the things that uh, uh, that firms have, have done that they might actually look at and say, you know what, that, that home working wasn't quite so bad. Um, it forced us into taking decisions about technology, about the way that we manage our, our teams. Um, and in theory, this should be a great opportunity for, for, for you guys, I guess, as people start, start to look at well, okay, what do we what do we do now? We've shown that we can work in a different way. How, how are you how are you going to make the most of that opportunity? Yeah, well, I mean, we've we've, uh, we've we've said this before that you know it's a, the unfortunate thing about the human race is that it takes catastrophe for a uh, for cat for a catalyst for change. Um, so if you look at the asteroid that wiped out um, the, the dinosaurs, hopefully this uh, COVID nineteen asteroid wipes out some prehistoric business practices. Um, like you know, speaking to your accountant once a year. Um, you know, if if small businesses don't learn from this, um, that that would be the saddest thing because yeah, I think uh, accountants need to be uh, stronger in going back to their clients now. And uh, what reason would you have for not wanting to be completely up to date when I can give you the tools to do it? What reason would you have for not wanting to be up to date on a month by month basis so that something like this happens again? Yeah. You know, we used to talk about this like um, when I was going out and, and starting with, with QuickBooks is uh, talking about the benefits of cloud was well, what happens if your office burns down and all that paperwork disappears, you can't get into your office and everybody needs to work from home. And the response I always used to get was, oh, well, never happened. This yeah. Yeah. well, you know, we're now coming out of a, of a lockdown, which meant, you know, no one can get to their office, no one can get to that paperwork. So yeah, that stuff can happen. So you need to be able to go right. I could give you the tools to be completely up to date on a month by month basis. You need to give me a spectacular reason not to be not to be doing that. Because yeah. what, what reason, what, what good reason can you give me other than, you know, I don't know, I can't do it. I've not got a phone. I can't. Yeah. You know, um, this, uh, your, your bank is, is connected up to your general ledger. You've got a, uh, an app on your phone to take pictures of all of your receipts. If you, you know, you can hook up uh, invoice fetch. I can do this for you on a monthly basis. Yep. And, and there's, been lot, there's been lots of talk about advisory for, for a long time. And, and it's like the clarity of, of what, what is it? What are we talking about? And I think the, the most uh, uh, telling thing for me from this whole experience is that, that whilst I talk about this stuff to, to the team here quite, quite a lot, They've, they've seen the reality because they've now had clients calling them and asking them about um, access to funding, about furloughing staff, about well, what happens if we had to close our business. And all of a sudden, it's like this awareness of, uh, well, well, actually, you know what? These clients are turning to us to ask these questions and it's not about their VAT return. It's not about their year-end accounts. Yeah. Um, uh, so we've, we've kind of seen that, that we are this first port of call um, yeah. And that's the opportunity. That's the thing we've been talking about. And and to make the most of that and support clients, we need the data. Um, uh, every bit of advisory starts from the data. <laughs> so the big lesson is, well, how do we make sure that we've always got access to the data? Um, yeah. uh, we've we've got the bank feeds. We need we need the the, the pre accounting tools like like the Seat Bank to to kind of give us that data on a regular basis. So we can piece it together, uh, and we can use that to add add value to clients. Um, so uh, uh, the, 
the whole thing about advisory, whether it's, it's app advisory, whether it's financial advisory, it all starts with the data. Um, so that's the foundation for it. So yeah, yeah. Um, so we're, we're, we're getting close to, to 10.30, everybody, everybody. If anybody's got any questions, do feel free to drop them in the, uh, in the chat box or Q&A box. Um, uh, Mark, so as we, as we kind of come towards wrap up, what's, what's, uh, what's on the horizon for a seat bank? So uh, uh, new product developments, what you got in the pipeline? Yeah, so um, as I said, we've got the, uh, the bank feeds, which are, uh, are now in a kind of uh, soft launch phase. Um, so obviously... Uh, anyone who is um, doing or has a kind of online banking uh, can obviously pull those bank fees directly into QuickBooks, uh, sorry, into Receipt Bank now uh, and do your, your full reconciliation. Um, and <clears throat> the benefits there, obviously, you, you've been able to have things like uh, bank match and uh, paperwork match from Zero and Sage um, for, for kind of years now. Um, but with QuickBooks, you weren't allowed to pull the information down from uh, their feed. But that means that everybody now has bank match and paperwork match. So the, the great thing for, for accountants is, okay, I've got all these transactions in the bank. I can see which paperwork is missing. And I, as I'm, I'm alerted to that on a regular basis. And you can then just ping a message directly to your clients to say, where's the paperwork for this? Where's the paperwork for this? And, you know, it just makes it far easier to do your, your kind of reconciliation. Um, uh, and I'd say there's, uh, there's, there's some far bigger developments that I'm not allowed to talk about. Um, at the moment, um, but yeah, there's uh, our CDC funding in January was was uh, was a big thing for us, and so it gave us a, a kind of it just happened at exactly the right time um, that we've we've got a lot of funding there to to kind of really push on and, and go into the kind of next level, and um, so there'll be some big announcements coming from Seat Bank in the very near future. Excellent. Great stuff. Um, so no questions at the moment. Mm -hmm. So I shall just uh, uh, reshare my slide just to, uh, uh, yeah, just to wrap up. I think uh, the last up, thing is obviously the, uh, for anyone who is not using it just now, obviously we still have our 30 day completely unlimited free trial on. Um, so, you know, if you do have, um, you know, clients that you are, are struggling to get the data in from, you can sign up for a completely unlimited free trial. We actually provide you with a training day with our, with our kind of practice team as well. So we'll help you roll it out. We'll help you get it set up uh, best practice so you're getting the most efficiencies for it. Uh, and obviously you can see just how, uh, how useful this will be for you in your kind of day to day. Um, and as I said, that's a, that's a completely unlimited free trial. So um, you can either get in touch with me um, directly um, or, or obviously you can sign up for that um, online. Excellent. So uh, the slide is there. Uh, trial receipt bank for free. Um, uh, Thirty day trials. Uh, so uh, do do sign up for that if you're not already using it. Uh, uh, some key takeaways. Uh, so App Advisory Plus, uh, Rowan has put together a a, a blog on uh, uh, how to get the best out of uh, receipt bank uh, in terms of setup and, and automation. Um, uh, Mark's already mentioned the the free trial. Uh, and, and the key takeaway for me is, is look at the stuff that's, that's happened um, over the, the last kind of uh, eight, nine weeks, 10 weeks, whatever it is. Um, look at the stuff that, that you would never have, have tried um, had, had this not have happened. Um, uh, and, and look at what you can, what you can use uh, going, going forward. Um, there are some questions just coming in, or I saw some stuff jumping up. Uh, a moment ago so let me just have a, a look at that um, uh, Mark probably one for you uh, so the bank feed in receipt bank uh, the question is will this conflict with zero bank feed reconciliation um, I guess this might be a great opportunity actually uh, um, uh, good for, for Rowan to, uh, uh, to have a look at the functionality as soon as it's available and we can we can do a review on that and uh, uh, a blog on how that might work in terms of of using that part of the seat bank's functionality uh, yeah. and, and what, how that fits with with zero QBO whatever it is that, that you're uh, uh, that you're using yeah um, so uh, leave, not... leave that with us yeah. um, uh, and we'll uh, we'll set Rowan the task of uh, uh, of doing a review uh, on that. Uh, Rowan's posted a link there to our, our blog um, in terms of uh, setup um, uh, and how to get the most out of uh, uh, auto publish uh, and so on. Uh, so that's the, the questions there. It is 10.30. 
so uh, uh, if there's nothing else, um, we will uh, end it there. Thank you so much for everybody for joining us. Um, we'll circulate a copy of the recording in due course. Mark, thank you for taking the time uh, to, to join us today. Um, uh, if anybody's got any questions, do, do get in touch with us uh, after, after the webinar. Uh, have a great week, everybody. Thanks again, uh, Mark. Uh, enjoy the, uh, the rest of your week. Uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll catch up again uh, very soon. Thanks yeah. very much, everybody, for joining us. Definitely. Thanks, guys. Take care.